My name is Aaron Carrada, and people started calling me Adventure Aaron in 2008 after I decided to give up my 9 to 5 career when diagnosed with cancer and traveled to my first country of Costa Rica, incorporating the book 4 Hour Work Week, written by Tim Ferriss, given to me by my boss at the time, now a mentor. A group of us, mainly strangers, hiked up about two hours into the jungle to a waterfall that reached an estimated 60 feet up. And at that point, none of us knew, supposedly, how deep the water was below it. And I decided to give it a go. And once I jumped, the rest of my friends rejoiced and had the dilemma of deciding whether they would jump too or just enjoy other people doing it and watch from their own resting point, safe zone. Later that evening, we were having dinner. Someone came down through the village and said, hey, it's Adventure Aaron. And from that point on, the name stuck. I'm Adventure Aaron, and I love doing wild and crazy adventures, living life to the fullest after my own diagnosis with cancer. Aaron Carotta is in real estate and banking. He gets diagnosed with cancer, which leads him to having a good old think about his life and his priorities. So after a long story short, he turns into a social media phenomenon, blogs about travel, and has his own television show, uh, which now will feature New Zealand and will end up uh, being shown to some 80 million Americans. He's also known these days as Adventure Aaron. I have a learning disability when it comes to reading. And part of incorporating the first real book I'd ever read, The 4-Hour Workweek, meant taking the most literal approach to it as possible. And achieving it in 60 days and continuing on to another 80-plus countries in the course of five years was my way of doing that. And I literally assumed the role of Adventure Aaron. With no experience on TV, no experience doing adventures, but again, understanding and enjoying other people doing them with me and being true to who I was. I didn't realize that I would have to wear all the hats and would be making mistakes that would potentially damage all of that, those efforts. I mean, after all, I was charging restaurants and people exposure values that would only allow me to get to the next country. That was the quickest way for them to make a decision. excited to see what we can do with this turkey today. It was hard to catch it, but I know it's going to be a little bit easier to cook it, I hope. I got my first taste of what that felt like when we were in New Zealand and working with the Fish and Game to educate people on the classified pest in their country, which was a swan, and how to allow them to earn their keep. That little backlash that I got gave me a bigger shock than I expected because I didn't understand why people could hate me. I was just trying to do good after my own discovery of what happens when you jump off a waterfall and feel adventurous and find your calling in life. All right, we got one. Well, is he still alive? Oh, he's, he's moving. He's not alive. He's dead, right? Yeah. He's dead as a doornail, man. <laughs> Trust me. He yeah, thinks okay. he's playing possum on yeah, He's probably playing possum. That's what they do, right? We'll put it down on the ground. We'll let you pick it up. No, he won't claw you. Okay, we don't, a kiwi okay. won't hold yep, a possum. Yep, no worries. Just give me a second. <laughs> I'll be rowing around the world, attempting to do what no one has ever done before. Some have even died, but many 
I try. And I'll be using a perspective that I've been able to achieve things over the last few expeditions, over the last few years with. To go a distance farther than anyone else has ever gone, like my last expedition in the canoe. It's just like jumping off a waterfall. It's a way of engaging others and allowing them to be motivated and face their own dilemmas of whether they want to be the adventurer or just enjoy watching someone else be the adventurer. We have the option to see things for whatever purpose in life. We want them to serve. And at the end of the day, it's just a matter of going out and doing it. Grabbing the piece of knowledge that you have, like a local who tells you it's okay to jump off a waterfall, or the unknown and trusting that your spiritual belief will get you there. What the group that I was with didn't know is that I had already asked the guide that we were with, who was a local Tico, Costa Rican, if it was safe to jump from this waterfall in advance. And he assured me that yes, it was. And it's that line of communication that gave him credibility in the eyes of my American peers and strangers that he had never had before. And it's a barrier that is broken that makes the circle of life, in my opinion, in this globe that we know it as go around. It's a universal language of seeing love and life. And I hope it's not too deep enough to remain at sea level. What can you say to people about doing what they love to do? Like, for example, what you're doing here, setting off to do. It's really, it's a bad cliche, but everyone gets a wake up call. And if you can just kind of address your fear and understand that it's similar to cancer, it's just the unknown. Once you actually take that leap and do it, it's all a reward after that. And even if you don't get dealt the cards I do, at least you can play your own cards and have fun playing the game. You are easy to root for.